What did Jesus say about the centurion? He had faith. Is it just faith? Great faith. We see it in verse 9. I have not found such great faith even in Israel, God's land, God's people. And I'm not sure if I had it in my notes, but I just need to make a note of this, that uh, the centurion called the elders of the Jews, and the Jew says, Jesus, you need to, 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 to take care of this man. He deserves it because he loves Israel. He built buildings for us. But what did the centurion see himself? Says, Jesus, I don't deserve to be by you. I'm not worthy. You see the difference there of thinking. So this man, the centurion, was humble. And he uh, not only had faith, he had faith greater than anyone amongst God's people, Israel. Wouldn't you love to hear that from Jesus? You have great faith. Now, did Jesus say this about the centurion because Jesus healed the centurion's servant? Is that the reason why Jesus said this guy has great faith? Did Jesus say the centurion had great faith before or after Jesus healed the servant? What do we read? We read in verse 10 that Jesus stated that the centurion had great faith even before the guy was healed. We need to take a note of that. Jesus stated that the man, the centurion, had great faith before even mentioning that the servant was healed. It was not about the healing. It is about his commitment and trust to Jesus. Why did Jesus say the centurion had great faith? The answer is here in our text. In verse 7, what did the centurion said and believe? The centurion believed that all Jesus had to do was what? Say the word. Just say the word, God. I believe you. Just say the words. In other words, the centurion had great faith because all he needed to do was what Jesus' will was. If it was Jesus' will to heal my servant, that's it. All he's got to do is say the word. In the centurion's mind, whatever Jesus' will was, that was it, and I will live with it. Just say the word, Lord Jesus, and I will live with that. That's the lesson we need to learn. Jesus said it, we are to just live with it. That's it. It doesn't really matter what you believe, because Jesus said it, that's it. And that's what the centurion was saying, and Jesus said, this man has great faith because he knew that whatever my will is, it will happen. And we need to note of the widow did Jesus care about the widow whose only son died? <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> poor woman. Husband dies, and then, now only, then only one son, and then he dies. Did Jesus have compassion to this woman? We read about Jesus' compassion in verse 13, don't we? When the Lord saw her, his heart, God's heart, went out to her. And said, don't cry. Don't cry. I'm with you. And then what happened? Out of Jesus' compassion, what did Jesus do? He brought a dead man back to life. For the woman. Because he had compassion for this lady. And again, how did Jesus bring the dead man back to life? How did Jesus bring the dead man back to life? Yes, he touched his coffin, but then he says, get up, young man. <laughs> All he had to do is say the word. And the young man got up. By his spoken word, Jesus brought the dead man back to life. And as we see in the very beginning of God's love and his creation, Jesus spoke and the universe was created. 
And Jesus does the same thing. He did it for the centurion, and he did it for this dead man and this widow by his spoken word. Jesus brought the dead man back to life. And from verse 16, we note an addition here why Jesus came to this earth. It obviously finishes with the cross and the resurrection. But why did Jesus come to earth? Why should we celebrate Christmas? Jesus Christ, God being a person on earth, coming to this earth. Why did he come to earth? We note here that Jesus came to earth to help his people. His people. We live daily with physical truths without questioning. Shouldn't we also live with spiritual truths in the same way? What are the spiritual truths we should live with without questions based on our passage today? And I want to note just four, and then I want you to think about God's will in your life, the spiritual truths personally for you. But in this passage, number one, a spiritual truth is that, it's in your notes, Jesus is compassionate and is always with his people. Help them. Jesus is compassionate and is always ready to help his people. The question is, are you and I his people? Do you and I belong to Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 15, 4, remain in me and I will remain in you. In other words, if we believe in Christ and are in Christ, we belong to Christ. We need to believe in Christ and we need to be in Christ. Then Jesus says, then you are in Christ. We, he says, believe and remain. Be careful when you are when you say you're a Christian, but then you, you're, you're all over the place. Are you really in Christ? Are you really remaining in Christ? No, no matter, God understands our sins and our faults. That's why Jesus Christ died once and for all. But we need to continue to remain in Christ if we truly want to belong to God and to Jesus Christ, who is available and loving and is ready to help each one of us. Are you and I remaining in Christ? This is a spiritual truth. God even says Jesus is Emmanuel. God is with us always. And Jesus says, I am with you always to the ends of the earth. No matter where you go, I will be with you. But we need to remain in him. Call on him. Perhaps... An illustration. Yesterday, I had a just a gut-crunching morning. Didn't know what to do. A situation came up. Just grieved me. Didn't really know what to do. And I'm trying to think the things to do. But what got me, as I sat down and meditated, is just talk to God. <laughs> God, you're in control of the situation. You know what's going on. I don't know what to do. I'm in pain. The people are in pain. What to do? Just pray. And you move on and trust that God is there. The situation is still a concern. But I know that Jesus will heal. And Jesus helped me through that morning. Jesus, and maybe there will be times in your life when you really don't know what to do. Get on your knees. Claim God. Really live with the reality that God exists and he cares for you. He does it through Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit, his word. Those are the basics that we need to live with. And then number two, Jesus has the power to heal. It's in your notes. So we need to know how to pray effectively and pray for healing because that is his desire, to
to help each one of us if we belong in Christ. But we need to humble ourselves, pray effectively, get rid of sins, make sure you confess those sins, get up, and, and, and yield to his will. Because, number three, Jesus has power over life. Not only the lives that we live, but even if we're dead, God can bring us back to life. <laughs> we see that. We, what, what does that mean? We need to live with our lives in God's hands. God can do anything with me. For he created me out of dust. But he loves me so much, he wants to recreate me. Why am I being stubborn? Why am I disagreeing when God wants us to trust him? Because he has power over life and eternal life. Do you really trust Jesus with everything and live your life and say, Lord Jesus, you're in control of all this situation. Help me. Give me peace. Teach me. What do I need to do if there's something I need to do? But I trust you. And number four, whatever Jesus' will is, it will happen. You cannot stop it. Whatever Jesus says, that's what's going to happen. Why do we fight against those words when it's going to happen? <laughs> when Jesus says, one of these days I'm going to come, return, and take home those that believe in me. Why do we resist? And say, no, Lord, I want to stay here. I want to take care of all this, all this. And really, the truth is, Jesus will return. He could return this afternoon, even before I finish my sentence. That is truth, Jesus said. So, let's wrap it up. We need to ask ourselves, what is Jesus' will for you as a Christian, personally? And then make a commitment to live with these spiritual truths, God's will. You know, questioning these spiritual truths is like questioning gravity. We could question gravity and just don't think about it. I just made a mess. It's just water, it'll dry up. <laughs> but you see the point. If this was glass, it would have been broken. Why do we do that with spiritual truths? When we don't live with those truths, it can be just like this illustration. It can be messy. Things can be broken. It can hurt people as well. Someone's got to clean that up. <laughs> so, what is Jesus' will for you? Live with the spiritual truths without question. One of God's will for us is to remember what Jesus did for us in communion. God knows that we can forget, and Jesus said, remember through communion. So, uh, we do uh, here at All Nations Bible Church once a month, we remember what Jesus did through communion. So, would you take a moment just to pray quietly before the Lord? Think about the things that uh, God is sharing with us today. And then if you're not a believer of Christ, you know, Jesus' will for you to be, to, to, is to be a Christian. And he wants you to be one of his people. So you need to believe and receive and remain in Christ. You are in Christ if you're a Christian. If there are sins in your life, Jesus says, I died for you, confess those sins. So that's what you need to do. That's God's will for you. And then there are many things, other things. Then you are his people, and he will be here. And then we are to commit to living with spiritual truths without question. Take a moment to quietly pray right where you are.